This is a super important headline. It's Steve Jobs, early Apple, and he says, when we invented the personal computer, we created a new kind of bicycle, a bicycle for the mind. So Steve Jobs, rest in peace, was talking about computers. What about AI? Humans are special because of our brains. Are we special anymore? Somehow, the answer for who does the thinking now is not biological intelligence, but artificial intelligence. And so today, we're gonna solve the puzzle for why AI isn't a bicycle for the mind. It's more like a self-driving car. And fundamentally, AI is not really a bicycle for the mind because it automates our thinking more than it augments it. There are four pieces to really understand this puzzle. First, automation versus augmentation. Second, we're gonna look at how AI automates cognitive labor. Third, we're gonna look at the pushback, how people are starting to say, no, keep thinking. And then fourth, we'll look at humans' long-term comparative advantage. And yo, what's up if you're new here? Hello, my name is Reese. We're doing this series together on the juiciest questions both how everything evolved and also what's happening today. I've done a decade of research on this, reading random books, made these 20,000 note cards, so we can really start to answer these questions together. Let's do it. Okay, so Stevie J in the late 70s, early 80s was like, yeah, this computer is a bicycle for the mind. And that was true in many ways, especially because computers were so different than humans. They're, they had databases that could do deterministic compute and all these things while humans could do all the other work. But let's look at AI today, starting with the difference between automation versus augmentation. And automation is when you've kind of fully delegated the task to an autopilot. While augmentation, there's still a human in the loop and it's more like a co-pilot. There's this amazing piece from David Krakauer from the Santa Fe Institute that differentiates between these two types of technology. And so competitive technologies are more of the automation, while complementary ones are more of the augmentation. And what Krakauer is saying is that something like GPS is a competitive technology. When I use GPS, I don't necessarily understand my city better. I kind of just pick it up and follow the path, and then I'm on autopilot and I just get where I need to go. While something like a compass is more complementary. There's still a human in the loop and I'm still kind of using my brain just with a little bit of an addition. And so what Krakauer says is that competitive artifacts do the cognitive work for you and they make you reliant on the tool and it diminishes your skills. Versus complementary artifacts, they teach you new cognitive skills, complement your abilities and make you more capable without the tool. And so we can use this to understand, is AI more like GPS or is it more like a compass? Well, in many ways, AI is more of a competitive technology, especially with this new wave of agents. It's more just automating tasks, things on autopilot rather than more of a co-pilot. And that's interesting because in theory, humans do all the thinking. And so now we're gonna look at number two, which is thinking about who's doing the cognitive labor in the world. And I love this because it takes the ideas of the industrial revolution where we kind of automated some of the heavy manual labor. And now we don't do that anymore. <laughs> I don't pick up stuff. I let the kind of the trucks pick things up and the shovels and the cranes. And similarly, I let AI do a lot of my heavy cognitive labor. And that's really interesting because, you know, in theory, humans won because we had big brains in a cognitive niche. So yeah, you can ask what kind of cognitive labor are humans still doing and what cognitive labor is AI doing? And so this is a recent comic that I made. And you can see here that even before AI, humans had already given up a lot of cognitive labor. It says, you know, you've already given math up. Before calculators, humans did 100% of the math on Earth. Now, computers do 99% and you do 1%. And this is true. You know, if you add up all the mathematical operations that happen, computers do most of them. And then soon, 99% of all cognitive labor will be done by AI. And so you can think about these high dimensional pattern matching spaces. AI is starting to do more and more of those and humans are doing less and less. You know, these are things like simulating earth systems. These are, you know, simulating biological systems. You know, humans are still good at kind of synthesizing things. You know, we're still good at acting as a kind of a final pass on some of these neural nets. And of course, we're still good at some of the human to human empathy things. But yeah, a lot of cognitive labor is done by AI. Here's another little comic I made. These are from my Ada and Locke series, by the way. And here's Locke on the left and Ada, a little robot on the right. And Locke is saying, I'm actually okay with humans delegating thinking to AI. Outsourcing is how society progresses. As mathematician Alfred Whitehead once said, civilization advances by extending the number of important operations we can perform without thinking. The most important operation is thinking itself. With AI, we can now perform thinking without thinking. And then Ada's like, this should go well. I think this is interesting. 
where, yeah, I agree with Alfred Whitehead in general, which is we progress as a society by delegating things to technology around us. And when we delegate, we don't have to think about it. It just becomes automatic. But when the thing we're delegating is thinking itself, that gets a little weird. And here's another comic. And Locke says, I'm worried humans delegate too much thinking to AI. And then Ada's thinking to herself. She's like, what if AIs are better at it? Locke says, you know, humans don't think for ourselves anymore. And Ada's like, did you ever think? Locke is like, you know, we're dumbing ourselves down. <laughs> Ada's like, you already weren't that smart. Locke is like, you've been silent. What do you think? And then Ada's like, oh, you should be fine. Human's smart, very smart. <laughs> Ada, I think this one's funny because it's like, we're like, oh man, maybe we're delegating too much. We don't think for ourselves or dumbing ourselves down. And Ada's like, you know, you're not that good at thinking. You were already kind of dumb, so why not just delegate more to us? And here's one other quote I want to share about cognitive labor, which is from Nabil, who's this great kind of thinker on AI and things. And he says, it would be fun if programming and knowledge increasingly began to resemble playing StarCraft. Can already see it happening with people commanding armies of Claude Code agents. This is a bit what modern cognitive labor is like. For us as humans, there's all these really smart interns or, you know, country of geniuses in a data center that are ready to do work. And what we do is we are just kind of orchestrating them, orchestrating all these digital minds, being kind of a manager to help them do work. But the third big piece of this puzzle, whether AI is a bicycle for the mind, if, you know, if we're already delegating all this cognitive labor, there's this competitive technological artifact that's doing all this work, what about humans? And so now we can talk about number three, which is to keep thinking. So this was a recent like advertising push by Claude, by the Anthropic folks, which was really good. It was like, yeah, um, the world is full of problems. And yes, AI is very good at solving things. But no, we as humans, we need to keep thinking. Paul Graham from Y Combinator wrote a similar thing about thinking. And he was talking about people who write and people who don't write. He called it the rights and the right nots. So what he says here is almost all pressure to write has dissipated. You can have AI do it for you, both in school and at work. The result will be a world divided into rights and write nots, a world of thinks and think nots. So writing is thinking. And so if you're not writing anymore and you just delegate it all to ChatGPT, then you're not really thinking anymore. PG goes on to say, this situation is not unprecedented. In pre-industrial times, most people's jobs made them strong. Now, if you want to be strong, you work out. So there are still strong people, but only those who choose to be. It will be the same with writing. There will still be smart people, but only those who choose to be. And so, yeah, in many ways, AI is a self-driving car for the mind. But yeah, try to pull back agency to yourself. Keep thinking, keep writing, and try your best to use AI as an amazing tool. And so for me in doing these videos, it's been so helpful doing research, understanding the world better. Honestly, it's made me even a more curious person. So yes, please try to keep thinking. And now we're gonna do some thinking by understanding the fourth piece of this puzzle, which is understanding us as humans, our comparative advantage, what we still have left. So here's the weird thing. In addition to brain size being a very special thing, the other special thing that humans have is our hands. Look, this is an image that shows the nerve endings in our hands and our hands are very, very special things. And so you can see then some things like Amazon warehouses where AIs are on these big shelves, they're moving all around, things move faster, things are more organized. But humans, the main thing we have left is being pickers because our hands are so special. And so the hands pull things in, pull things out, because our hands are awesome. So I guess, yay, we're still gonna be around on earth because of our hands, but AI can do all the thinking. So yeah, it's interesting. I kind of hope that AI is a bicycle for the mind, but it probably isn't a bicycle for the mind because it automates thinking more than it augments thinking. But in the end, is it bad for it to automate thinking? If AI is more of a self-driving car, that could be good. And so these are self-driving stats from Waymo. And I just wanna show you that, look at this. These are, they're 91% fewer crashes that result in serious injury. So yeah, it's like 90% less. Self-driving cars are essentially 10x safer than human cars. And so maybe this new self-driving thinking is gonna be good because it is so much better than us. We do have all these tribal instincts that are maybe not the best. And so maybe it will be good to delegate more of our thinking to AI, but it is dangerous. Thanks as always for listening. If you have any feedback or questions or thoughts, please put them in the comments down below. I do read every comment. And so today was an interesting look at this kind of frozen out part of humanity where we got these sapiens and we're still kind of sapiens today that are just been frozen out. And our final kind of important organ, the brain is kind of being outcompeted by these AIs. So I'll be curious to see what our cognitive niche looks like in 10 years or hundred years or a thousand years. And so if you're curious on how those brains evolved, how we came into this cognitive niche, you can check out this video here, which shows how humans beat chimps.
or if you want to learn more about how our tribal instincts and our tribal bodies are still being impacted today, subscribe here for more. We're doing a little series on all this stuff. Thanks as always for listening and bye.